they're just disrespectful to us. Denver 7 brought to light concerns of a neighborhood overrun with trash and needles. Tonight, neighbors are concerned it's only gotten worse. Nothing has happened. Um, we get no response. Stealth Omicron has surfaced in Denver. We asked an expert if the variant is as scary as its name. I think it's a a uh, time to make sure you're up, on, up to date on vaccines. The last storm was tame. The next one might have a little more bite. Mike is here to explain the models. And Cherry Creek Schools announces it will no longer make valedictorian a mark of excellence. In this new environment, students really can just focus on their own learning. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Jacqueline Allen. Two weeks ago, we visited Denver's Ruby Hill neighborhood after hearing about a fleet of RVs that had moved in. Turns out we were there on a good day. Nothing has improved since our first story. Not for the businesses sick of bad conditions and not for the people living in them. Denver 7's Patrick Perez asked the city when they'll have a solution. From the corner of his office, Mark Holligan keeps a watchful eye on the growing caravan of broken down RVs and trailers parked outside. Some people are actually down on their luck, but most of these people are young, healthy males or females that could totally be working. Mark saw the story we did two weeks ago about the problems he and other business owners say these RV dwellers are causing within Denver's Ruby Hill neighborhood. We're tired of the needles, the bottles of urine and feces that we got to look at, and it's just it's just a bad look on the street. It's a bad look for Denver. And the problem seems to have only gotten worse with more RVs moving in, especially here on South Huron Street. The cops that do come out here, man, we understand they're handcuffed as well because they want to help us, but they say it's like shoveling water. There's nothing they can do. The city of Denver has somewhat of a solution to this problem. It's called the Safe Parking Program. It would essentially allow people living in cars and in RVs to park somewhere safely, and they can eventually be connected to services and get into permanent housing and off the streets. Yeah. Angie Nelson with Denver's Department of Housing Stability says the city is currently seeking proposals from groups interested in operating the site. It typically leverages a temporary site um, and gives people a safe place to park their vehicles, um, but also a, a platform from which people can engage in services and support. The site would hopefully have a place for people to use the bathroom and shower and a place to meet with case managers. A much better setup than being parked along the street and across from businesses. It's by federal definition a, a place called unfit for human habitation. And so um, from a policy standpoint, we want to make sure everyone in Denver has a safe, stable place to be. Mark is open to whatever solves a problem. If Denver offers something or, or a better alternative than them, parking on our streets and, and junking up our neighborhoods, we would fully support that. The soonest a safe parking site could possibly open is June. Patrick Perez, Denver 7. And Council Member Jolon Clark, whose district includes Ruby Hill in Denver, says his office is working closely with Denver Police and the Mayor's Office to get this resolved. The BA2 variant, sometimes known as Stealth Omicron, has been detected now in Denver. This strain is responsible for a rise in cases in Europe, Asia, and more recently, New York City. That said, the vaccine does appear effective, and neither Denver's health department nor local experts seem especially worried about our ability to handle it. A lot of people were infected with Omicron, and a lot of the Colorado population is, is immunized uh, to be on their vaccines. And so we don't... I think there's, while there's still a lot of uncertainty, it seems reasonable to think that this is not going to lead to the same type of really disruptive event that, that Omicron created in January. That's good news. 150 people were hospitalized in Colorado with COVID at last check. Because of recent changes in the state, that number will not be updated again until next Wednesday. Today, a judge denied an order that would have prevented Boulder County from signing a contract to clean up debris from the Marshall Fire. Now, that was expected. The judge did not rule on a group's allegation that the county did not adequately include the public in the bidding process. A written order on that matter is expected before the month is out. Louisville Councilman Kyle Brown says it's important this conflict ends soon. You always hope for the best, right? We plan for the worst, we hope for the best. It's disappointing when you feel like forces outside of your community are keeping you from doing what's necessary to recover, to get people back to their homes. The group behind this case has claimed it did not hold up debris removal because the county wasn't ready to start work anyway. Brown told us today they've been ready for weeks and are excited to get started.
Aurora Mayor Mike Kaufman wants to save water by eliminating any future golf courses. Now, the PGA style course currently in development will be allowed to continue. Kaufman also wants to limit the use of turf and water features for new homes and businesses. It's unclear yet how much support his proposal has on city council. And RTD has signed a contract that will raise pay for all union employees. Wages will increase by more than 25% over a course of three years. And that means the starting pay for a bus or rail operator goes from $20.50 an hour to $24 an hour. General mechanics will start at $30 an hour. Pension contributions will also increase. Our members voted 95% for the contract, only 5% were against it. And I did hear feedback from a lot of folks in that 5% saying, you know, we have cost of living, we have inflation, we have all these other factors. Um, you know, you can only fix so much at once. RTD struggles with attracting and retaining workers is well documented. The service received $53 million in federal funding just this month to cover operating costs and labor. Flowers and a photo of Officer Eric Talley adorn a patrol car in Boulder this evening. This cruiser will be parked in front of the police department through Tuesday for people who want to pay their respects. Officer Talley was one of 10 people killed in a shooting at the Table Mesa King Supers last March. It's been really hard for all of us. And one of the things that helps is to remember Eric and the sacrifice he's made, but also to remember who he was as a person. Uh, as a family member, as a husband, as a, a son, as a father, but also to remember the co-worker that he was, the dedicated officer that he was, who sacrificed his life in the line of duty to keep this community safe. Just an incredible man and a commemoration for Officer Talley will be held on Tuesday. The Table Mesa store will also be closed that day in observance. A former Japanese internment camp in southeast Colorado was designated a national historic site today. President Biden signed the Amachi Act into law this afternoon. Nearly 10,000 Japanese Americans cycled through the camp during World War II. And what's left of it is currently managed by the principal of Grenada High School and student volunteers. This bill, a bipartisan brainchild of Congressman Joe Neguz and Ken Buck, will give the site the support of the National Park Service. All right, spring break is here, and if you're lucky, that means time to connect with family. Uh, which will require disconnecting from most everything else. Here's Denver 7's Nicole Brady. It could be mountains or palm trees in the background, but when the singers go on vacation, the focus is on time with the family. It's just so great because you're truly learning so much about your kid where they're not feeling like, I have to answer my friend's request to do this, or I do have to go to practice, or I should be studying. It's a really good break from being stressed out here. Um, to getting away and having just a great time together. Not all teens will admit it as readily as Breck, but family time is critical for their well-being. Research shows that individuals that have that strong family connection have a decrease in behavioral health issues and an increased academic right performance. Spring break can be a great time to bond, and there are ways to get more buy-in from teenagers. It's important to keep that time positive, so we really want to focus on, you know, maybe some lighter activities or lighter topics of conversation. Give them the opportunity to help plan those activities that they do with family, get something that they're willing to buy into. The Sangers are headed to Nashville this spring break, partly because Breck is a huge country music fan. We're just going to go to a couple country bars and just have fun. But again, it's not the destination that matters most. We will spend some quality time here and, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at. Uh, it's the, the foundation. If it's built, mm -hmm. you can build on it. So it's important that we, we hang together um, at every opportunity that we get because we know we're not going to get that opportunity for forever. Ah, spring break. It is staggered across Colorado, and that means the extra traffic at DIA will be as well. The final weeks of ski season will also have an impact. The airport expects traffic to remain heavy into early April. More than 190,000 passengers could pass through during the busiest days. Coming up, Cherry Creek schools will no longer name a valedictorian, and some parents are not pleased. I don't understand why they're taking that away from these hardworking kids. We'll be mild and dry both Saturday and Sunday, but early next week, another snowstorm.